4.4 example 7 in your notebook says show that the formula x sorry the cosine of x minus y so a subtraction formula for cosine cosine of x minus y does equal the cosine of x times the cosine of y plus the sine of x times the sine of y for x equals pi over 3 and y equals pi over 6. So all we're doing is verifying that the subtraction formula for cosine is actually true for specific angles. So in order to do that, uh, all we really need to do is sub in those specific angles into our equation. So on the left side, we have the cosine of x minus y. And we can work that down, subbing in our values for x and our value for y. So here we have the cosine of x is pi over 3 minus y, which is pi over 6. We can perform this arithmetic. Uh, we just need to have a fraction over 6, so 2 pi over 6. So cos pi over 3 becomes 2 pi over 6. It's an equivalent value. It's a fraction over 6 that we've expressed it as. Minus pi over 6, which inside the bracket, 2 pi minus 1 pi is pi. Pi over 6. We're left with the cosine of pi over 6, uh, which we know from our unit circle is radical 3 over 2. And now we can take the right side of our equation, which was the cos of x, cos of y, plus the sine of x times the sine of y, and do the same thing. We're just going to sub in the specific values that we've been given for x and y. And if we come out with the same value as we did on the left side, then we know that they are equal to each other, in which case the subtraction formula for cosine holds true for specific angles. So here we have then the cos of pi over 3 times the cos of pi over 6 plus the sine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 6. These values come from your unit circle. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. The cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. The sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So again, I maintain that these two things are being multiplied by each other. I used brackets. Uh, you can use a multiplication symbol if you like. I just find brackets easier to see clearly that they're being multiplied by each other. Okay, so this term is just half of radical 3 over 2. Well, that would be radical 3 over 4, right? Multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. Radical 3 over 4. Same thing happens here. Radical 3 over 4. If I have uh, radical 3 over 4 plus radical 3 over 4, then I have that two times. So I have 2 rad 3 over 4. Uh, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. Okay, so I have 1 half of radical 3. Another way to write that is radical 3 over 2. Left side equals right side. Therefore, the formula is valid for x equals pi over 3 and y equals pi over 6. Do you think it would be valid for any other two angles? Um, no, because uh, the cos is either a sine or the cos is negative or positive. So. But would this formula, the negative uh, 
the subtraction formula for cosine. If I get any two specific x and y's, would the left side end up equaling the right side? Yeah, that's a yes. Nice. 7b is a similar uh, problem, similar example. This time we're working with the addition formula for sine. So on the left side, we have the sine of x plus y. And on the right side, we have the other portion of that formula, which is the sine of x times the cosine of y plus the cosine of x times the sine of y. We want to see if that's true, where x equals pi over 2 and y equals 3 pi over 4. So again, we're just going to sub in our values of x and y and use our known values for our special angles. So we have the sine of, in brackets, pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 4. And we can work that down. We're looking for fractions over 4. So pi over 2 becomes 2 pi over 4 so that I can add these guys with a common denominator. Uh, notice I'm never uh, approximating, so I'm never throwing this in my calculator and getting a decimal angle and a decimal angle and then adding them up, okay? This is how to get the exact value because you have the exact values of the sine and cosine of special angles memorized. And if you don't have them memorized, you can refer to your unit circle. So we have 5 pi over 4 here in the bracket sine of 5 pi over 4. And then if we look around our unit circle, we find out that that is negative 1 you, over radical 2. Are you going to be using these for And same strategy on the right-hand side. We're just going to sub in our angles x and y. So we have the sine of pi over 2 times the cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus Another uh, product over here, the cosine of pi over 2 times the sine of 3 pi over 4. And then very carefully, we're just going to look at our unit circle and find all of those values. So we're looking at the angle pi over 2 and then finding the y coordinate of that point in the unit circle. That's going to be the sine of pi over 2. And that ends up being 1 sine of 90 degrees times the cosine of 3 pi over 4. The cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1 over radical 2. And then we're going to add that to our next product, which involves the cosine of pi over 2, the cosine of 90 degrees, so the x coordinate of that. Uh, that terminal arm which goes straight up so the x coordinate is actually zero the cosine of pi over 2 is zero and we multiply that by the sine of 3 pi over 4 which is 1 over radical 2 which of course doesn't matter because anything times zero is zero so our first term anything times 1 is just itself negative 1 over radical 2 second term is zero which gives us left side equals right side. So again, the addition formula for sine holds true for specific, specific angles. Okay, in the last example there, we are going to use an appropriate compound angle formula. So we have our magic uh, trigonometric formula sheet. In order to determine an exact value for the sine of pi over 12. So we are given the sine of pi over 12 and we're going to use a compound angle formula. So what we want to do is we want to express pi over 12 as the addition of two angles or the subtraction of two angles. And the two angles that we choose, we want them to be special angles 
on our unit circle. So we're looking for either multiples of 30. It's not a perfect cir triangle, circle, whatever, unit circle, or multiples of 45. Okay, so that's a terrible diagram, but we're looking for special angles. And we're going to put two angles together, either by addition or subtraction, and come out with pi over 12. So the idea here is, is you might at first be doing some guess and check, things like that. Um, but in quadrant 1, which is where this is, right, pi over 12, it's a really small angle somewhere over here. Well, we know that pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Okay. Pi over 12 would be half of that. Half of that, okay, so it's quite small. So it's 15 degrees. Uh, but basically then what we're saying is, okay, can we take other angles, special angles from quadrant one, and it looks like probably gonna subtract them. We're not gonna add them together to get pi over 12. You say pi over 12 is equal to one half of pi over six. You could, but we wanna be able to express it as the sine of x minus y so that we can use our compound angle formula, the subtraction formula for sine. Okay, so in order to do that, we are going to do a little bit of guess and check. Um, we're gonna take pi over three and subtract pi over four, okay? We're gonna take pi over three and subtract pi over four, and we'll see what we get. And another way to think about that is, um, if we've taken, and there's actually maybe even another way to do this one, but if you take uh, 45 degrees or 60 degrees, which is what we're doing here, we're taking 60 degrees and subtracting 45 degrees, you would get 15 degrees, okay? So you could think of it that way in terms of degrees if it's easier at first. So if you're looking at needing 15 degrees, well, you know 60 is a special angle and 45 is a special angle, okay? So 60 degrees is pi over three, 45 degrees is pi over four, and then we'll see if this comes up to, we'll confirm that it comes up to pi over 12, okay? So here we go. Uh, in order to actually perform this subtraction, I need two fractions that have a common denominator. Common denominator here would be 12, so I'm gonna express pi over three as a fraction over 12, which would be four pi over 12. Four pi over 12. And then pi over 4 as a fraction over 12 is 3 pi over 12. Perform that, you end up with pi over 12. Okay? So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the sine of pi over 12 is equal to the sine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And now we can apply the subtraction formula for sine. Okay, the subtraction formula for sine says you take the sine of x, which is gonna be our first angle in the bracket, multiply it by the cosine of y, which is gonna be the second angle in the bracket, and then subtract the cosine of x, which is pi over three, times the sine of y, which is pi over four. Getting uh, into my own mess here, but that's okay. It'll shrink again in our next step. And then we just go to our unit circle and we get these exact values. The sine of pi over three is radical three over two. The cosine of pi over four is one over radical two. The cosine of pi over three is one half. The sine of pi over four is one over radical two. So now performing this arithmetic, we have radical three over two times radical two. Radical three over two radical two minus one over two radical two. And because these both have the same denominator, in simplest form, they'll be combined. The numerators, in order to combine the numerators without rounding, we have to leave them as radicals. Radical three minus one in the numerator, and the common denominator is two radical two.
So what did we do here? Uh, if you have room for step one, I don't want to erase this, but this is step one. Write given angle as a difference. So we had x minus y. Then step two, we're going to, that's right here. My notes, sorry, but apply subtraction formula for sine. Apply subtraction formula for sine. And step three, simplify. That's this. So they just